year, I think. I think it was the last charity event, I think, about a year ago. And I suddenly thought, oh, how am I going to get in that dress? Because, you know, I've expanded a little bit, you know, like you do, ladies, when you're giving birth. But I think I've done all right, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mentioned a number of facets of, of your work over the years, cabaret, model, film, TV. How did your sort of show busy life start for you? It's really quite embarrassing really. I used to work with horses and that's, I wanted to get to the really top of the horse world, you know, and um, oh, that wasn't me by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've just given birth, but you know. Um, I was busy working with horses basically and I had two amazing, wonderful thoroughbred mares, uh, all flies, all smart, and a cat ball and my long hair and my jodhpurs and my boots. And this photographer come up to me in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the countryside and said, they're trying to find a Maryland double um, in England at the moment, in, in, the, in the newspapers. Um, like an English version of that. And I was like, and? <laughs> I looked at myself with my jodhpurs, you know, smelling of you know, horses and things, and he said, I think you should go in for that. And I, I said, well, I don't think so. But basically, cut long story short, him, him and some other of my family members put me in for this competition without me knowing. And before I knew it, I was called to London, <laughs> done a makeover, and by public vote, I won. We're doing all the voice and everything. Um, this big ma national marathon competition. That then helped me to have a role of her in a film and opening up cinemas and things. And then it went quiet and then I just suddenly decided I love doing my charity work, maybe I could use the Marilyn look to raise money for children and all charity things and that took off. And I also got an agent who helped me to get some other film roles in theatre. Talk about other films. We have to talk about the film Mr. Lonely, which you made in 2007. And you, in that film, you weren't Marilyn, you were Madonna. Well, actually, and you worked with people like Jamie Foxx. I wasn't actually Madonna. I was a lady who was who thought she was Madonna. Yeah. She played she um, was Madonna, Madonna Pet. Well. Yeah, yeah. So a bit complicated. I played a lady who was in person. Oh, on the sleeve. You were on the sleeve. No, I opened um, it for and the. That film went to the Glitzy Ten Film London. Festival. Was that a bit exciting for you? Um, yes and no, I don't really like that type of world to be quite I'm not knocking it, but I, I prefer sort of a more day-to-day -day life. I'm not really into that sort of thing, really. What about the other stars in the film, like Jamie Foxx, Samantha Morton? Did you get on okay with those? Um, I think Cliff Richard's wife was in it, wasn't she? Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's still in the Richard's film. No, Anita Pallenberg. Yeah, yeah. 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 Keith oh, Richard. Keith Richard, Richard yeah. yeah. Yeah, the great yeah. Anita Pallenberg. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was absolutely amazing. She, she, I took my daughter on the movie and uh, we had to be a long way. Angel. Well, Angel. We had to be away from home a long time. And me and Did she actually play a part? She did, she played the Queen of England. Oh, uh, Angel, you mean? Yeah, Angel. Angel got a, a small role in the film as well. Yeah. How old was she at that point? She, I think she was seven. Yeah, but Anita, I've got to tell you some funny stories about Anita, because she's supposed to be the 60s wild child, and she was. <laughs> she used to take me out on little trips in her little tweeds, and we used to go out on little Scottish buses, and she was so down to earth, and so, just so lovely. You know, she used to tell me some of her wild stories about the 60s, and with the stones, and <coughs> getting stoned, and... Because <laughs> this film was set in Scotland, wasn't it, in a commune in Scotland? In, yeah, in the castle, yeah. we were yeah. acting Various actually. people played various well-known people like Shirley Temple, yep. James Dean, yes. and the Pope, James Fox. Played James Fox played the Pope, and he was absolutely lovely. And uh, I played the role of Madonna, and um, Samantha Morton played Marilyn Monroe. And, yeah, it was, uh, but it, I, I thought it was just a small film when I went to go and film. I didn't realise, I didn't even know who a lot of these famous people were. <laughs> I thought it was like a student flick. But it ended up giving me a Hollywood uh, movie star title of my own, which is really weird. I didn't uh, expect doing like Marilyn things all those years ago would lead me to being becoming a Hollywood star myself. And, uh, uh, <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The London pre there was a London premiere, but there was also a premiere at Cinema, Cinema City where you turned up on the red that said by invitation only. Yes. You turned up on the red carpet on a horse. Well, it was, that was my what, what was the idea of that? Well, that was my premiere. I did the London Film Festival with Mr. Lonely and Carnes, 
you know, the red carpet. And I decided, because I come from Norwich, and I was a Norwich girl, and I love Norwich and Norfolk so much. I mean, even Wyndham, I used to knock on the doors around here, canvassing for calls for my father's business. So it's very dear to my heart. But what I decided to do is, because I've been given this opportunity, I thought, I'm going to chat, because I love my charity work, I'm going to turn this movie success into giving something back to Norfolk. Um, and giving, giving to the people that helped me to get where I, the opportunities that I'd had. And so I staged my own premiere and my own red carpet event at Cinema City. And because I do so much animal rights work and human rights work, I decided instead of making this about my success in this movie, let's celebrate everything that everybody else does in Norfolk, you know, like the arts and other people, you know, sports people, people who give time to charities and help, you know, make other people's lives better. And I, I rode a horse on the red carpet in the name of animal rights to, you know, to emphasise my animal rights work. So that was the idea of the Cinema City thing. It was about. It went up very well, I understand. Yeah. The newspaper reports. I think it's done better than the London Film Festival and the Cannes. So, and um, yeah, I think that was the highlight of uh, one, highlight of my career, really doing that. That was Ma wonderful. Madonna. Famous Shameless. That's it. Famous Shameless. He's dead now. Yeah. Yes. How old was he when he did? I think he was 36, but he was... 36? Yes. He, 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 yes, he's very well known all around the world, but unfortunately, yes. rest in peace, Seamus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Madonna, Marilyn, Blonde Bombshells, you like the Blonde Bombshell, do you? Not really. Yeah. Some of my favourite roles have been like things when I played a grey-haired grey nurse in the Birmingham Royal Ballet, and I played a drug addict, and um, I played a hooker. <laughs> in, that was with Royal Ballet, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I know. Oh, gosh. I was five weeks pregnant with Angel and I had to play a harbour side hooker. <laughs> that's so funny. With Roy Hunt, no, it's With Roy Hunt, yeah. yeah. And um, so that was one of my first small film roles. But I, yeah, I, I think you I've played that, everything, you really. You've played with Ross Abbott and people like that, Julie and Walters, have you? Julie Walters, I've done, I made a film with her called Melissa. And I've done a and film Bob with Bob Geldof, yeah, Great called Bob I Am Bob. Bob, yes. What was that about? Was that about his charity work? No, it was um, it was actually intended for I think it was like comic relief as a charity film and ended up it ended up doing very well across the world and it's won quite a few awards that film I Bob. Yeah. So, were you Marilyn in that film? No, I think I played I think I was Madonna in that one. <laughs> I can't even remember yeah, Madonna. <laughs> you played the bill so many times. Yeah. Um you made an album with Iron Maiden as well, didn't you? No, I didn't make an Iron album. I promoted their Album. Oh, on the sleeve, you were on the sleeve. No, I opened it for the. They had a big event. Album with Iron Maiden London. as well, didn't you? No, no I didn't make an Iron Album. I they the most invited the world me to. Oh, on the sleeve, you were on the sleeve. No, I opened oh, it for the sexy lady. They had a big no. event. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> has, has Iron Maiden done an album called Sexy <laughs> Lady? No. Well, I've just got that feeling there. I don't oh. know. No, <laughs> I can't remember what album it was, but it was back in 1997. But I. They did me as a decomposed Marilyn Monroe. They put all latex on my face and right. made me look all mouldy and <laughs> like gangrene down one side and then perfect on the other side. And as all the world's media came through the stairs, there was all smoke billing downstairs. And I was the first thing that all the media and all the guests would see as they arrived. Is I had to act where I was laying on the stairs all stuck to me, drunk as a Marilyn. And this side of my face didn't have all the gangrene on, it was all like it was normal. And I had to sing with this bottle of champagne and glass as all the media and the cameras were coming. And I kept up singing things like, I want to be loved by you, just you. And looking at people, that was what I was directed to do, to, to look at people as they were coming up the stairs and sing to them. And then as they walked past me, smiling or whatever they wanted to do, what I was directed to do was then turn my face and my body to look angry than like not very nice was it <laughs> but I think the album but the reason why they, Iron Maiden wanted me to do something like that is because I think the album was to do about the torture chamber or the torture chair or, or the that was the idea of it anyway so I've done some really unusual yeah. strange this jobs. This show is about Marilyn what, yes. what do you think was what do you admire about Marilyn what's her best attribute? 
She was a fighter. I think she was well ahead of her time. I mean, I'm not an Anne Marilyn expert. I must profess, I'm not, I'm not a Marilyn expert. But what I do know about her and what I have observed and studied is I don't think what the public knew of her and how the studio and how the media tried to emphasise her, she was not quite the woman she was. She was, I think she was underestimated, not because she had lots of love and emotion in her, you know, lots of sentiments and passion, and that was suppressed in her. The ironic, ironic about this, ironic thing about this little film I made here, I artistically directed this little film. We made it back in the year 2000. And one of the things I wanted, to, the reason why that film had that storyline is I felt that Marilyn gave so much to the world, didn't she, as far as the memories and the image. But she didn't have the life that she really wanted. She was denied things like love, um, family life, a lot of things me and you take for granted. And the reason why I put that in that film is she, it, I know it was a comedy, but there was a deeper meaning behind that little film. And I was trying to show, you know, yeah, she was this big wonderful star. And behind all the makeup and the dress, she was a loving, caring, sentimental person. And Hollywood and her career denied her the chance to have a proper love, a proper family. Not that she had a proper family before Hollywood. And that was, and that was probably a deep way of going about it and turning it into a comedy. But if you watch it, ever get a chance to watch that again, and that is on the internet, that was what I was trying to. That was, that was the message I was trying to give underneath it. And I wasn't running in high heels, if you noticed, I didn't have high heels. I had big, big clotty things, because we lost our shoes, didn't we, Andy, as I remember? Who was the main guy in that film? Mr. Andreas, <laughs> from the Constantia Brothers. You must have heard of Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, Marilyn married Arthur Miller at one point. Yes, she and, did. And uh, I think she admired uh, intellectuals and reading books and that sort of thing. Which... But I think she was. Yeah. This is the thing what people don't understand about her. I do think she was a very intelligent woman. She, as I said, she was very ahead of her time. She was well, very well read. She, you know, but Hollywood back then, they used to create their stars. They were more in control of celebrities and stardom. Whereas today, obviously, I mean, I'm not very happy about the way celebrities and stars are. Are promoted and treated. I think they, we treat them very cheap, we treat, we treat them very nasty, I think we treat them as just numbers, there's far too many of them, they're not special. But back then the studio really had a lot more control about how they, what, you know, how they promoted and how, how they had their stars on display. You know, the, there was lots of photographs, for example, that you would have, you would take for granted on the tabloids today, that would never ever be allowed to be shown of their stars back then. I, I learned that very much. Well, I opened a really hard on my charity work, my animal rights work and things, and I'm currently working on something called the Family Moral Movement and working hard um, to promote the front page campaign, which is to help protect children against harmful media, because I feel that Great Britain has become very much in moral decline. Um, having watched that charming film today, um, I just suddenly thought, okay, it was a long time ago, but wasn't that when ladies were ladies, gentlemen were gentlemen, and, you know, we didn't, people could go around their day-to-day -day life then, and they were not bombarded with women treated like sex objects, and sexuality, and sexualization everywhere you go, because, I'm very, you know, I don't mean to sound old-fashioned, and it's not about just being old-fashioned, it's about having decency, you know, and respecting ourselves and respecting children. And the family, the great British family. And that's what I'm going to be working hard to do. Well, thanks very much for coming in, Thank you. Melita. What a lovely ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.